Alright YouTube, I don't really want to end my night on a loss, but I wanted to bring you a couple of videos. Uh, looks like I do have a battle against a 10 star now, so I will be showing you someone of my own rank. And I've been messing a lot with skirmish armies recently, I actually changed my retainers. Uh, I'm hoping this person brings a lot of matchlocks. Um, because there are good strategies to defeat uh, matchlock heavy armies, and one of my favorite ways is the Katana Cavalry Horde. That's right, folks. Um, it involves bringing um, large amounts of cav uh, to the field, which is uh, both risky um, and good. I mean, if your opponent ends up with a lot of spears, that's where the risk comes in. Um, and then as far as the... Uh, I've got too much cav here. I'll drop a couple of units. And so this is where I want to go in and get plenty of tough sword units. So I'll get my Lone Swords here, I'll get a couple of Nodachi, and then a couple of my Katana Samurai. So I'm going to bring a very stout, um, a very stout uh, sword component there. And so this, this, uh, this army is going to rely on confusion and mobility to outdo my opponent, uh, who likely will have missiles where I will not. Um, so there is a danger in not bringing missile troops, but sometimes it pays off to have that mobility. I find mobility to be very helpful. This is the foothills map, though. It has some terrain, so the mobility is no guaranteed win either. And um, you got to be careful with your katana cav, as the katana cav horde is not good versus other cav. You really only want it for taking down um, enemy infantry or possibly the enemy avatar unit. So how you use your katana cav is what makes or breaks this strategy. If you allow your opponent to get his... Um, to get his cavalry involved with your own, then you're going to be in trouble. There's also an inherent risk with this strategy. Um, sometimes it's fun to run your cavalry in one gigantic horde to scare your enemy, but um, when you bring an all-sword army, kind of like I have with my general, it does put your army at risk for enemy katana cav. So you want to take a look at that. Also, great guard. Um, you don't want those guys charging into your sword units. Yari cav is bad, but slightly less threatening. Um, and you want to make sure you use the right units to absorb that charge. Um, because if you start losing too many infantry units, of course, you know, you run the, uh, the chance of chain route. So one of the things that I like to do is put my Nodachi out front to take things head on in a charge. I will back them up with my Katana Samurai. And then, uh, what I will hope to do with my Lone Swords is put one in the center. And then I will put one on either flank. And, uh, this will allow me to hopefully try and wrap up my opponent's army or just discourage any flanking shots. Um, I will put my general here. Actually, yeah, I'll put my general here right by the Lone Sword so I can use the Lone Sword, uh, lone sword unit to, to block any attacks as necessary. And my opponent's probably going to want to capture that dojo uh, over there. So what I will do is I will run my Yari Cav as kind of a blocking for my Katana Horde. And so sometimes what you can do is engage the enemy cab with your Yari Cav, get them fixed, and then just tear after their army with the Katana Horde. Again, uh, some of you don't like my rush strategies, but honestly, it's just I'm more at home <laughs> with the rush strategy. I'm not near as good with uh, missile strategies. I will try and show you missile strategy as much as I can, uh, but again, it is not my forte. So I'm going to take the old cavalry horde here, the uh, like the Mongol horde, and indeed my opponent has brought a lot of missile troops. That is exactly what I wanted. His cavalry is what's my worry. He's got three units of monk cav with excellent upgrades. Um, but most of his army, he has, yeah, he has no spears. That is bad for my opponent. He's got a lot of missiles. He has no spears. His sword troops are tons of lone sword ashigaru, which are good, um, but they are no match for katana cavalry. So all I need to do is get his yari cav busy, or get his monk cav busy with my yari, and then um, and then just pound into his lines with my katana cav, and then while that confusion's going on, nail him with my infantry. Now he is rushing uh, rushing for the sword dojo, so I'm just gonna bypass. Uh, the morale shrine for now. Actually, I don't know. If he stays there to capture, I'll go ahead and capture this shrine. Let's see what he's going to do. He is running his cavalry all out at me. I have this hill position. I don't... Well, actually, this thing it cat's sitting all over me, too. This is kind of dangerous because his matchlocks might be in range to support. Let's go ahead and take his cav head on. And uh, let's try and outflank him with our katana cav. That gummit cat, you would come up here right when I'm trying to fight this. This is both... Um, yep, and the cat sat on my ke cat sat on my keyboard, so I just exited out of the game. I'm going to reinforce with my katana cab units. I need to outflank, but again, my opponent's, um, my opponent's army is nearby, and this is a risky maneuver, so what I might want to do is just disrupt as much of his army as possible right now. 
So I may indeed even ignore some of his cav. That's probably what I should do, actually. I'll just take this unit around. Let's ignore some of his cav and just go ahead and start hitting his katana units with our own katana cav. He wants to take my katana cav head on. I don't think that's what he should do. Actually going to run patchy ahead. My cavalry will die here, but the idea is to, to cause as much damage. My opponent's taking a calculated risk here, thinking that he can use his matchlocks to help make up for this. And it is working very much to his favor. Let's see if I can kill a few of his matchlocks. Probably isn't going to happen. struck too early with my cavalry. I should have run away and not allowed his army to engage me like that. I caused a pretty good deal of damage, um, but probably not enough uh, to turn the tide in my favor because he still has a large horde of lone swords. The real problem now is going to be his matchlocks are going to have free reign on me, basically. And the problem is going to be taking down his, uh, his matchlocks. Uh, that was not how the strategy is supposed to go down. His matchlock are not supposed to survive, but I'm guessing now is the best time to charge, um, at least while his matchlock are disorganized. So I'll catch this group of guys there, and let's catch this group of guys there. I need to keep Patchy safe. Um, let's get my Katana Samurai and uh, engage them on this big horde, and see if we can maybe outflank with my Lone Sword. Put another stopping unit here and try and block his cab in this vicinity. We'll use Patchy to get up here and um, help put some pain down on these enemy troops. The quicker I can get my men into a flanking position, the better. You can see his matchlock are already working their magic, and this is indeed what you should be scared of. If I put Patchy over here in the woods on stand and fight, that'll help keep him safe as long as possible. But you can see that I am starting to get a route on his unit, so this may yet work. You have to remember, though, I have to survive with enough sword units. Yep, sweet. This is the problem with lone swords. Their morale is terrible. Um, so that's what you have to work on. And indeed, you can see that I got a chain route, so I'm going to just ignore any remaining units, go straight after his matchlocks, get those guys to quit firing, and not allow them to, uh, to pull up this victory. So this battle may look a little bit uh, haphazard to all of you, and some of you may not like it at all. You may be like, eh, this battle sucks. You're just uh, running around with hordes. Yes, but see, you can see the confusion that my, uh, my giant horde of troops caused his own men. And that's exactly um, what you want to play to your favor. People see that giant cavalry mob, they, you know, they see that huge threat, and then they're going to panic. So now I'm going to want to split my troops up and make sure to, that I'm chasing all of his matchlock units and to not let one of them get away. I can take Patchy at this point and start to chase down um, more of his units as well. So, because uh, Patchy's my only cavalry unit left. I don't want to let his matchlocks fire at me, though. He's going to try and uh, stand and fight here. In fact, I'm going to take all my infantry into uh, into loose formation because they can easily win a, a melee fight even in loose formation. And that'll again just help uh, crush the uh, ability. Let's see, matchlock warrior monks are going to get in a fight with me there. My opponent's trying to pull this victory out, which is noble of him, but um, he's definitely probably not got enough men left to stop me at this point. I'm going to let Patchy catch this matchlock unit and take them down. And I'm going to take the remainder of my sword units and come over here towards his bow warrior monks. He's got this unit of swords that he forgot out there, and his avatar is now engaged with my uh, lone swords. Definitely not the kind of fight he wants to be in. Uh, darn it, somehow Patchy got taken away from that fight. That was stupid. This match has been kind of weird. I've made a couple of sloppy mistakes here and there, but... Oh well, I think I'll still be able to pull it off. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Like, right there, I'm letting his matchlocks fire a whole bunch. Uh, definitely not what I want. Hope you all have learned one of the weaknesses of Lone Swords here, because there was a big discussion going on about whether or not Lone Swords are fair, and again, someone was all over my case saying that it's cheap of me to use them. But uh, I only used a few of them, 
Uh, so you can again see the uh, the problem with Lone Sword uh, Ashigaru. It's their morale. And if you can break their morale, then that is pretty much all she wrote. These Bow Warrior Monks out here are a dangerous unit. I need to try and chase them down with Patchy and engage them in melee. I don't want him to get shots off on Patchy, so I'm going to go into loose formation just in case he gets a volley right before I hit. Patchy, go, 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 you stupid. Patchy's getting caught on this fight back here. Alright, and I'm now going to put him in a tight formation now that I'm in. If he has his Bow Warrior Monks on uh, defensive, they might try and continue to fire, though. But uh, Patchy has got these Bow Warrior Monks, and his attack is pretty severe. So uh, he'll easily mop the floor with them. My opponent has one last um, Matchlock unit. And he's going to try and hold out with it as long as he can. But uh, honestly, there's probably not a whole lot of point in that. As he simply uh, will not be able to defeat my army at this point. Alright, I made sure that that uh, Warrior Monk unit shattered. And I'm going to start moving back in this direction. And I'm going to use this hill for protection. He won't be able to fire through the hill. He's going to want me to charge up and over the hill. Uh, but I'm going to take this opportunity. So again here, my opponent had some high-level matchlocks, some high-level warrior monks, and a lone sword spam. One of the popular armies. You can see that even though I made some mistakes, I was still able to win. And the reason behind that is because my army is calculated to work well against this type of army that my opponent has brought. Let's see if I can run forward and tempt him to stop. Let's see if I can get him to fire his volleys. These guys are going to be fast. Um, he's probably got, you know, upgrades on them and stuff. I'll just sit here and let him shoot at me, try and keep him busy. And then I'll start taking Patchy way around the flank, and then I'll just slowly walk the remainder of my infantry up this way, because I don't need to be in any hurry here. <clears throat> if he starts taking shots uphill into these woods, it's not going to be super effective. He's definitely going to want to try and get shots at my general. Uh, however, I will make sure that the terrain masks Patchy's approach. So I'll start charging him with the Lone Swords, and then I'll keep Patchy just behind this ridge line, so that if my opponent wants to, uh, if my opponent wants to pull us up, and see this is one of the weaknesses of Matchlock, is these ridge lines are going to protect Patchy's approach. And now I need to pull him back further because he's getting over the top of that ridge line. You need to use the terrain to your advantage, and then I'm going to keep these units charging. So his attempt to stop and shoot Patchy there is going to just slow him down. So I'm going to start boxing my opponent in with two different units. Pull a little bit further back behind that ridge line just in case. Okay, this battle's now over because he just took his volleys, so now I can just charge him with Patchy and not have to worry about getting shot. Alright, and that's all she wrote, folks. So that's one way to take down a Lone Sword spam army with matchlocks. Um, you want the mobility, because the mobility is what screws the missile armies over, because they're not able to protect them all. And you also want a strong infantry component, and I mean strong. Like you saw my, uh, my component here, Swords, was very tough. So you want to have that strong infantry component, it's very important. Tell my opponent good game here. So there are weaknesses to the Lone Sword spam uh, and matchlock units. I don't want people to think that they're invincible. Yes, they are tough armies. Uh, but there is ways to beat them. Again, you have to use that mobility and you have to not be afraid uh, to get out there and go on the offensive and put them on the defensive uh, because eventually they're probably going to slip up and make mistakes. And again, you can see I made a lot of mistakes like with my cab in this battle. Yes, they caused quite a bit of damage before they routed, but the biggest thing they did was that um, that confusion they caused. And then my, my opponent charged all of his melee troops in a big blob into my melee troops. And, um, you know, Lone Swords are good, but if they blob up against good sword units, it's going to reduce their effectiveness, because part of their effectiveness is in numbers, which means that you want to envelop your opponent's flanks at least a little bit, um, or else that numbers advantage won't really work to your favor. I mean, there can only be so many guys on the front line cutting and hacking. Um, so yeah, that's that's definitely one of the, the weaknesses of Lone Sword. So I hope this battle taught you something. In some ways, I'm a little bit embarrassed of it, just because my micro is pretty, pretty crappy with the cav. But uh, I think you can you can see that the the fear and the damage that a katana cav horde causes, and then the ability of the yari cav to help delay. Oh sweet, I got an armor unlocked. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I got a lot of kills. My opponent brought more troops than me, but again, it's that mobility that uh, that did things in for me. So he was depending too much on those uh, those lone sword ashigaru, and you can see that my sword units had a field day with his. 
um, just because his units were tired and beat up from the katana cab to begin with. But if you look at my katana cab, they weren't necessarily all that great, but a few of them did get a fair number of kills, including my, uh, my Yari cab. And so those kills add up in the end, so it helps draw down the, uh, the numbers. And I also disrupted his match locks and got them where they weren't in quite as good a position to fire. And then again, you can see that I played on the morale of the Lone Sword Ashigaru. I outflanked them in that one sector, and then you see that whenever they do route, it's a chain route. So keep those things in mind. Hope this helped you out. Eric Carthage signing off for now.